Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India discussion about uh, the uh, you know uh, the uh, queuing system um, you can say uh, uh, you can say the uh, uh, features that are uh, important in uh, determining various aspects of a queuing system so l denoted our average number of people in the system lq was the average number of people in the queue and then we also had uh, uh, computed the average waiting time that a person will uh, spend in the system, which includes waiting in the queue plus uh, service time. And then uh, we will also talk about the uh, waiting time in the queue, which we show also is important. So, anyway, so let me just uh, continue the discussion about L and L q. And uh, uh, so, this is as functions of as functions of rho, which is your lambda by mu. That is your lambda is the mean arrival rate and mu is the mean service rate. So, lambda by mu denotes your in a sense utilization of the queuing system. Okay. So, um, now you, you can see uh, from the figure, you can see from the figure that is um, on the screen that uh, as you know full utilization of the server, that means if rho is close to 1, then you see that your um, uh, graph for L and L q both are going to infinity. Right. So, uh, that means when lambda is close to mu, if rho is close to 1, that means lambda is close to mu, that is the uh, mean arrival rate and the mean service rate are almost the same. In that case, you see the number of people in the system and the number of people in the queue, they will the, uh, the expected number will go to infinity. Right? You can see the vertical, uh, the, the approaching the both the uh, curves are approaching the um, uh, vertical line. Okay. So, now, this, this what we are saying is mean values, that means L is the average number of people in the system and L q is the um, average number of people in the q, which are going to infinity. So, it is not, see it, it, it is uh, bad if once or once in a while your system uh, has infinite people or very large people or the q has uh, becomes very large, but here it is saying that it is the mean behavior, that is on the average the system will uh, have infinite people, very large people and the q will also be very large. Of course, okay. so that is not acceptable finally, but anyway also what we want to say here is that now in this case, uh, this does not happen in real life, because if, if the crowd, if the big crowd then it turns away lot of people. So, it is not that the uh, q and the uh, p, uh, will continue to grow. So, uh, that does not really happen and therefore, what we are saying is that in real life um, uh, there will not be a balance because the queue system uh, you know how many people turn away and so on. So, it will it will not follow the same pattern and therefore, um, when things become so bad, it, it uh, we cannot uh, apply the same rules that we started with you know our assumptions and therefore, um, uh, we will say that the system is not in balance. So, therefore, it cannot be you know measured or it cannot be analyzed by any of these uh, models that we have written down. right? So, if you look at the mean length of 4 on the vertical line, uh, uh, then you draw a horizontal line from 4, then you see that it will meet uh, the corresponding utilization is 0 0.8. Okay. So, mean q length that means on the L q curve. So, um, uh, and so L q is the first curve and then L is the second curve. Okay. And similarly, if you look at uh, the value for L q equal to 5, the corresponding rho value is 0 0.85. So, that means, when you allow four people to wait in the queue, then the uh, server will be ideal for idle for uh, 20 percent of the time, right? because rho is 0 0.8. So, 0 0.2 is the, uh, uh, is the fraction of time that the uh, server will be idle and so 20 percent of the time the server is idle and if you allow the queue size to be 5, uh, then uh, it will be 15 percent idleness. So, you can see that there is a definite conflict that is if if you if you want that your server should not be idle for a very long time or even not then as we saw that the 
uh, if the system is allowed to operate freely, then your uh, queue and the people in the system and people in the queue will go, become very large. So, therefore, but then you do not want that to happen, because then you lose out on customers and so on, and it becomes a chaos. So, uh, there is a definite conflict between the issue, uh, uh, between the desire to obtain full utilization of a server and the desire to keep the mean queue length short. So, that you, you can see that. So, where wherever there is um, goodwill of the customer is very important, certainly uh, the um, uh, persons who are offering the service would want to make sure that the queues do not become too big. But then where it is more important, that means when uh, the finances are important and uh, you are um, having a service and where the, um, uh, you know, you cannot keep too many servers, because that means that many salaries and so on. And then of course, uh, your um, the servers will be idle for a long time. So, therefore, uh, you one has to balance. So, the system can of course, first of all the, this model has shown you that the system cannot be in balance if the arrival rate is equal to the service rate or even if the arrival rate is close to the uh, service rate. Okay. And um, so, um, the ideal ratio of arrival rate to service rate is something less than 1 that is acceptable because your service rate must be more than the uh, arrival rate. Otherwise, uh, and uh, I mean that makes sense. And so, uh, but its specific value depends on the relative cost of idleness versus congestion. So, if uh, for you it is very important that uh, the system should not be congested, there should not be uh, too many people in the system, then you will make sure that your service rate is much higher than the arrival rate. And if um, your you have limitations, you cannot pr provide, uh, you know, uh, uh, more than one server may be, let us say, or the uh, efficiency at service providing the service, then, uh, you know, uh, you will go for. You know, so, I mean, right. So, so, idleness versus congestion. So, if you want the, allow the um, server to be idle, you will not have that many people waiting in the uh, system, right, because your service system will be such that your mu is much higher than the uh, your mu is much higher than the arrival rate. You will ensure that and in that case your uh, L and value of L q will be small, but if um, your uh, mu is close to your lambda, then there will be congestion. So, one has to really strike a balance between uh, you know uh, idleness versus congestion. So, this is the whole idea behind. I mean, so, therefore, you see we can through these uh, this uh, model, we can study and decide what should be our level of service, uh, dip, given uh, what is your uh, uh, level of, uh, uh, you know, customers arriving to the system, right. Okay. So, now, um, even though we, uh, the Littles formula told us that your, uh, if you, we have already computed uh, average waiting time in the system. And now, uh, we also know that w q can be written as uh, row times w. That means, the average number of people waiting in the queue is your utilization factor times the average waiting time in the system. But um, uh, we will also like to compute this independently, because the distribution of w q is also of importance. And besides, uh, the um, uh, w q is of importance in hospital emergency rooms, because uh, in a hospital emergency room, uh, the time that you are waiting to be, uh, you know, taken to the um, doctor is important, because you want to cut that short. It is an emergency room and therefore, people need treatment fast. So, you would uh, therefore, w q is of importance and in hospital emergency rooms, you would want to ensure that your w q is not uh, very large. Okay. And so, uh, we want to look at it in a uh, greater detail and also obtain the distribution of w q. So, now of course, um, you can immediately write down this relationship, because if there is nobody in the system, when the um, uh, arrival comes for emergency treatment, then uh, probability. Uh, so, probability of w, the, the waiting time will be 0, because the patient will immediately be taken to a doctor for being uh, treated. So, then in that case, your waiting time will be 0. So, probability that w q is 0 is p 0, that means there is nobody in the system, which is 1 minus rho. So, now we will want to compute uh, the um, uh, distribution when uh, a person coming to the system has to wait. That means, there is 
uh, one or more than one person already in the uh, emergency room and then uh, the person has to wait. So, this we will compute uh, try to obtain the distribution for W q also. So, for n greater than 0 uh, that means, if there are uh, any customers already present in the system, then the new arrival has to wait through n exponential service times until his or her own service begins. Right. So, if we want to find out the probability that W q is greater than t, where W q is the waiting time in the q. So, then probability W q greater than t. So, I will break it up into uh, conditional probabilities and then add up. So, this will be probability W q greater than t given that there are n customers and so we add up from 1 to infinity, because there has to be at least one customer to be being serviced, then only there will be a uh, need to wait in the q. So, uh, this is n to 1 to infinity probability W q greater than t given that there are n customers in the system. Okay. And this then uh, would be written as, so now when you write this probability, then this will be p n into probability s n greater than t, because if these are the n service times, then <coughs> s n would be t 1 plus t 2 plus t n. So, this has to be greater than t, because uh, the n people being serviced, see you are um, in the queue, you are waiting in the queue. So, then n services have to be completed and that takes great, because your waiting time is more than t. That means, these n services are taking more than time t and this into probability uh, of there being n customers. So, then this will be, uh, so I will write down for p n, which is rho n into 1 minus rho n varying from 1 to infinity probability s n greater than t. Right. Uh, now, if I take rho outside and then I write this as um, rho, so this will be rho n minus 1 into 1 minus rho and this is probability s n greater than t. Now, see at uh, n equal to 1, the value here is rho into 1 minus rho and this is probability s 1 greater than t. So, if I rewrite this as rho outside and now at, at n equal to 0, your p n would be just 1 minus rho, because rho and rho raise to 0 would be 1. So, this will be 1 minus rho. So, same thing and here it will be um, s 1 greater than t. So, the same event is being written here and therefore, all subsequent ones will be the same. So, um, this helps you to, because now you have this summation, uh, oh, uh, the p probability sign is missing here. Okay. So, please write this will be p in probability of s n plus 1 greater than t. I will just write it. there should have been as probability. So, probability s n plus 1 greater than t. So, therefore, uh, so now you have, uh, uh, can, because the summation is from 0 to infinity. So, then we can sum it up easily. And therefore, you can you know just expand this. And so, here this is um, no people, then the service time of the, uh, no, sorry, 1 rho into 1 minus rho actually would be the uh, uh, you know, one person in the system, then the waiting time is the service time of the first person is uh, of the one person already present in the system is more than t and so on. So, when you take out rho, then this is what uh, your you can you just expanding this expression like this, this series. Okay. And this now we know, we recognize this, because we, when we computed the uh, distribution for uh, the average time in the system. So, then uh, this was, this is, this is nothing but and that is why we wanted the sum from 0 to infinity. So, this is probability w greater than t and we already know the distribution of uh, uh, w greater than t. So, we know this probability. So, therefore, this is rho into e raise to minus mu 1 minus rho t. Okay. So, we have computed this uh, probability w q greater than t, which is equal to this. No, so, now the rho is creating the problem because I cannot call this uh, uh, an exponential distribution. Why? Because if you um, write the uh, PDF of W q, then this will be, uh, you know, this you will write as 1 minus probability W q less uh, greater than t. Yeah, this whole thing. So, then d d t of that will give you the PDF of uh, W q, right. So, this will be um, uh, minus rho into, because this is 0 and I will write down the, uh, yeah. So, this one is uh, rho into e raise to minus mu 1 minus rho t, substitute for this here, then d d t of this, right, rho is outside. So, then uh, differentiation gives me this expression, which is equal to this. 
So, therefore, this would not be an exponential distribution, because exponential distribution would be this rho is the extra part. Right. But if you consider the conditional distribution, so now uh, that is important, conditional distribution of w q given that w q is greater than 0 does have an exponential distribution, because now you will write the conditional part and this will, will that be equal to probably w q greater than t, because when you take the intersection obviously, uh, t is positive. So, w q greater than t. So, the intersection of these two becomes just this event and divided by probability w q greater than 0. Okay. See, remember this, this you have to write as probability w q greater than t intersection w q greater than 0 and then it will be probability w q greater than 0. This is what our formula for conditional probability is, but uh, this is the same as this of course, given that t is positive. So, this event is equivalent to this event given that t is positive right? and then you divide by probability w q greater than 0. So, therefore, this becomes now rho e raise to minus mu 1 minus rho t divided by rho, because probability w q greater than 0 is Okay, this is what we computed here. Uh, w q uh, is not zero. Yeah. So uh, remember our W q probability W q equal to uh, uh, probability W q equal to zero was one minus rho. Right? Because if the person doesn't have to wait, that that means there is no person in the system, and so therefore p zero. This probability is equal to p zero, which is one minus rho. So if you want probability w q greater than zero, then it will be one minus of one minus rho, which is equal to rho. Right. So probability w q greater than zero is uh, rho. So we divide this. Now the rho cancels out, and this is e raise to minus mu 1 minus rho t. So, this now is coming from that means, uh, this now represents, because uh, the conditional part w q greater than t, uh, given that w q is positive. So, this is this, which matches with our uh, exponential distribution. And so, um, uh, the conditional distribution of w q uh, is uh, exponential with parameter mu into 1 minus rho so, um, yeah, so this is and therefore, um, I again just want to repeat that this is not the conditional, let me just remove this. So, it is prob just probably w q greater than t is that what we were computing. We started writing out as this and then this is, uh, uh, I just uh, you know rewrote this expression and just to, so that I can relate uh, this series with the series uh, with probability w greater than t. So, that was helpful and then we saw that the uh, distribution is not matching with the exponential. So, it is only when um, you take the conditional uh, probability that you will get. right? And so, this already we had seen and therefore, this is rho. So, um, that is it. So, therefore, and this will be useful at times. You may really want to know the uh, distribution of the. So, this will be conditional distribution of w q, which you can recognize. Otherwise, the uh, distribution of w q is given by this. I mean, the f q t. F w q t. Right. Now, uh, let us compute the expected um, uh, expected uh, time or the average time uh, spent in the queue waiting for to be serviced. So, uh, that we will now uh, compute independently, because this is only the conditional part. So, you will say that the expected time in the system is equal to the expected. So, the time in the system is time in the queue plus service time. So, expected uh, value of that. So, expected time in the system is expected value of time in the queue plus the service time. right? And so, this can be written as expected time of time in the queue plus expected service time. So, this if we denote by w q, yeah. so this is the um, uh, uh, convention we have been following that uh, the uh, variable is also treated as the uh, as denoting the expected value of that variable. So, this is expected time in the queue plus uh, expected service time is 1 by mu, right? because your uh, uh, number of services is uh, with parameter mu, exponential with parameter mu. So, 1 by mu is the uh, expected service time. So, this is what you have and therefore, w q is w minus 1 by mu 
and you can so we know w expected value of w which is 1 upon mu minus lambda minus 1 by mu. So, this becomes what we had computed okay, rho times w. So, w q is equal to rho times w and uh, which we have already uh, uh, seen through uh, using the little formula. So, we saw that uh, the conditional distribution of w q and w are both same exponential and the parameter was uh, yeah we I mean uh, the same parameter. So, they uh, and now also um, I want to make uh, want to uh, make an observation that the little formula that we obtained were under special conditions, but it turns out see that means, uh, uh, the relationship between l and l q w and w q and l and w. So, they are all in fact, what it means is that if uh, you can find any one of the quantities l l l q w w q, then you can find all the other three. So, the all the four are related and it turns out uh, fortunately that um, under very general conditions these formulae are valid. So, therefore, uh, you know uh, computing any one of them would help you to get the values of the others. Okay. Now, I want to continue this um, uh, you know discussion on these uh, uh, quantities um, l l q w and then and also show you how we then through these analyze uh, uh, these uh, weighting uh, weighting uh, systems or weight, uh, uh, queuing models. Okay. So, <coughs> this particular example is a small one, but anyway this is from uh, Sheldon Ross and what it says is that machinery in a factory break down at an exponential rate of 6 per hour. Okay. So, that means the arrival of the machinery for repair is 6 per hour and then there is a, um, a single repair man who fixes machines at an expo exponential rate of 8 per hour. So, the arrival and the um, a service uh, rate is all provided to you. The cost incurred in lost production when machines are out of service. See the machines come for repair and they are waiting. So, the repair man has to repair them. So, while the machines are out of service, they incur a cost because uh, you the uh, there is lost production. So, rupees 100 per hour per machine is lost to the organization. right? So, uh, the cost of lost production is rupees 100 per hour per machine. This is what is given to us. Now, we want to find out what is the average cost rate incurred due to failed machines. So, while the machines are waiting to be repaired, uh, they are not producing and therefore, there is a loss to the organization and this is the rate. So, you want to find out the average cost rate. Now, the average cost rate will be dependent on the number of machines which are in the system, which are either waiting to be repaired or which are being repaired. So, that will be our number L. So, therefore, um, you see uh, L is lambda is 6, mu is 8. So, therefore, average cost rate we will write as 100 rupees 100 into average number of broken machines, which is uh, either waiting to be repaired or they are waiting uh, or they are being repaired. So, this will be rupees 100 into L. L is the average number of broken machines, which are in the system. L, L gives you the average number of people or customers in the system. So, uh, therefore, this is rupees 100 into lambda upon mu minus lambda, which is um, 100 into 6 upon 8 minus 6. So, rupees 300 per hour. So, the loss. So, therefore, this is a very important parameter, because the uh, system would now li like to evaluate whether uh, the repairman that they have is good enough or they need to have more repairman, because it depends on what is the uh, how much the, uh, the, the loss to the system uh, and compared to the salary of a repairman and so on. So, that question you see will always uh, be running through all these examples and you want to um, analyze uh, and you know. So, this should hopefully help you uh, in your decision process. Okay. Let us take another example. So, you have now a pump station, a single pump station. So, uh, a single uh, pump petrol station. Okay. So, there is only one pump and uh, so cars that come for uh, uh, taking the petrol have to wait in the queue. If one is being serviced, once the uh, uh, serviced car is done with, then the other will come from which is waiting in the queue. Now, inter arrival times are exponential with mean 12 minutes okay? and uh, that means, the inter arrival time the uh, average time between two arrivals is 12 minutes and uh, the service time is exponential again with mean service time 6 minutes. Okay. So, um, 
uh, average time it takes to fill up a, a car is 6 minutes and waiting space is unlimited. So, I have not put any question here, but as we go along we will see what are the kind of questions we want to answer here. So, let us see uh, lambda therefore, that means the arrival rate is 5 per hour because uh, arrival time uh, inter arrival time with mean is 12. So, therefore, the number of arrivals per hour is 5 and sim similarly the service rate mu will be 1 by 6 into 60 because this is per minute. Six, yeah, this is this is all in minutes. So, where you convert to hours. So, this will be 10 per hour. That means, the service rate you can on the average you can fill up 10 cars in an hour. Right? Rho, the um, utilization factor or the traffic intensity, we have lot of names for this. So, rho is 5 by 10. Right? 5 is your uh, arrival rate and 10 is your uh, service. So, 5 by 10 and therefore, this is 0 0.5. So, the traffic intensity is not very high. 0.5 is uh, not considered to be very, that means the petrol station is not very busy uh, right now with the kind of uh, uh, service rate and the kind of arrival rate. Okay. Um, then if you want to look at uh, the probability that there is no car at the petrol station, so that will be 0.5 1 minus rho which is 0.5 uh, again which is a high probability. Then uh, P n is the n, uh, n cars at the station, so that will be 0 0.5 into 0.5 raised to n right. and then uh, the mean number of cars at the station mean number of cars would be lambda upon mu minus lambda or uh, uh, well okay this is uh, why am i writing this as how oh, in fact this is uh, sorry this is rho upon 1 minus rho so the mean uh, number of cars at the station is uh, uh, 0.5 upon 1 minus 0.5 which is 1 and L q the car waiting in the q is 0.5. Okay. So, this is the idea. So, now uh, we want to analyze this system through uh, these uh, quantities that we have computed and you know like we want to again answer the question that in case the uh, arrival rate increases then uh, supposedly the traffic intensity will go up because this number will go up and then uh, what kind of uh, numbers L and L q will be there, the values will also go up and therefore, uh, the, uh, the uh, petrol owner, the station owner may want to ask a question as to should he install a, a faster pump and so on or uh, of course, uh, more than one pump we will uh, the system that uh, model we will discuss later on when you have more than one server. Right now, we are talking about only one server um, systems. And therefore, uh, the only option that the man may have in case the arrival rate goes up, if the other option would be uh, to install a, a pump uh, which is uh, you know filling up cars at a higher rate. So, we will just look at the uh, analysis uh, uh, with the numbers. Okay. So, through this example which we are just discussing, I again want to raise the issues about you know uh, validity of a model. So, it is very important that you keep uh, recalling what are the uh, assumptions under which we are working and what are the. So, uh, for example, here um, I wrote that waiting space is unlimited, but you know that in a petrol station uh, waiting space cannot be unlimited and usually uh, you have space for 2 to 3 cars. Okay. So, but of course, the, the with the given data right now, it did not really matter because your L was 1 and your uh, uh, L q was uh, quite small, right? Uh, L q was 0.5, I think. L q is 0.5. So, therefore, uh, that uh, uh, right now it is not an issue whether the space is limited or unlimited, but in case your data changes, then to say that your uh, waiting space is unlimited is not a very valid assumption. So, therefore, um, one should always keep this in mind that uh, the, uh, the better model would be when you talk of queues with limited capacity or with limited waiting time. So, that would be a better model for such an example. Then um, the arrival pattern is state dependent. Now, here to assume that uh, uh, lambda will remain the same all the time is not correct, uh, because if there are uh, you know already 2 to 3 cars waiting, the person may want to go to the next petrol station. So, therefore, this is not and um, uh, arrival process is not stationary also. So, it is state dependent and also not stationary, because during the rush hour there may be uh, the lambda may be higher than corresponding to uh, when it is a slack hour. Okay. 
So, therefore, the lambda itself may change during the day. So, uh, the lambda is not uh, stationary and it is also uh, state dependent, because um, the people do not like to wait uh, for too long. For the, because as you know, you can always uh, drive fast, uh, uh, you know, further and get another petrol station. The, uh, 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 there may be other considerations also, that is true, but sometimes people like to wait at a particular station, because they are familiar with it, people know them and there can be other, so many other reasons. Okay. Then, uh, also we must keep this in mind that whatever computations we are doing, remember they are, um, uh, they are not giving us accurate information about L and L q and the remaining other parameters w and w q, but we can certainly change the uh, values of lambda and mu and uh, of the system. So, that means, we can study the changes in the system and then correspondingly see what are the changes in these uh, numbers l, l q, w and w q. So, the, this model certainly will help you to uh, study the changes. Uh, whatever changes take place in the system, then the, you can uh, accordingly find out the changes in n l l q. So, that is what I want to, uh, uh, so that is what I have stated here, that the real use of the model is in evaluating the effect of changes in lambda and mu. Right. So, for example, um, the um, st station owner has, uh, uh, has uh, the choice of, has alternative of installing a faster pump. If he does that, then the mean service time is reduced to 4 minutes per car. It was earlier, um, uh, uh, this was earlier 6 minutes per hour on the average. So, now the average time uh, has gone down to 4 minutes. That means, the petrol pump can service 15 um, uh, cars per hour. Okay. So, uh, by installing a faster pump, the mean service time is reduced to 4 minutes. That is, uh, the pump can fill up 15 cars per hour. Right. And so, uh, your rho would now become 5 upon 15, because the arrival rate is 5 per hour. And so, um, the uh, uh, intensity traffic intensity, intensity or as you call it the ut utilization of the petrol pump and so on. So, that is 5 by 15, which is 1 by 3 and this is 0.33. So, this is less than 0 0.5. So, the um, earlier one was 0 0.5 the traffic intensity, now it has come down to 0 0.33 and uh, probability that there is no car at the station. So, that comes out to be 1 minus 0 0.33, right, because it will be 1 minus rho and so that is uh, 0 0.67, which is greater than 0 0.5. So, that means, the petrol pump would be uh, vacant for more time. Uh, so the fraction of time uh, would be he higher here than here, because there it was uh, 0 0.5. Since, rho is 0 0.5, so 1 minus rho is also 0 0.5 and your L, the average number of people in the system or at the pump, pump, petrol pump, that means the number of cars getting filled up or waiting to be filled up. So, that will come out, come out to be 0 0.33 by 0 0.67, which is also less than 0 0.5. So, therefore, uh, this does not warrant installing a faster pump, because your uh, petrol pump is vacant longer, the intensity traffic intensity has come down and so on. Yes. So, if, if, it, if you are looking at it from the, uh, from the viewpoint of the uh, petrol pump owner, then certainly it does not warrant uh, installing a faster pump. In case the arrival rate uh, goes up, that means you have 6 cars per hour instead of uh, 5 cars per hour and with the current pump that you, that the man has, then this will be rho will be 6 by 10. So, this will be 0 0.6, that means your traffic intensity will go up from 0 0.5 to 0 0.6. Your probability of there being no car in the system is 0 0.4 and your L is uh, 1.5 and your L q is 0 0.9. So, therefore, you see that is what I am saying that now with the model he can play around and uh, for different values of lambda, he can figure out uh, what is, what, how these numbers are changing and then if we can, uh, as I said, you know, uh, the losing the goodwill of the customer versus the cost of installing a faster pump and so on, uh, one can, the, the owner can study all those things through, uh, through this, through this, this model, right. And therefore, that the basic contribution of uh, this model lies in being able to study uh, the various changes that uh, will take place in your uh, you know, uh, para, you can call them parameters uh, when you change your, uh, when the lambda and mu change. Okay. So, now I will, um, after having discussed uh, uh, the uh, one server uh, model, 
we will now look at the um, uh, situation when there is more than one server. Okay. So, this is the model would be MMS that the same the pattern arrival pattern and the service pattern are the same. right? Uh, you can say that um, uh, and therefore, the, and the number of servers uh, is now more than 1. So, in that case you see um, uh, as long as there are number of people is less than s, then your service rate will be, because uh, whoever is there in the system, if there are n people in the system, all will be uh, serviced. And therefore, your service rate will become n times mu. That is understandable, because everybody is being serviced and therefore, um, there are n, n people who are being serviced simultaneously. So, uh, the, uh, the service rate you can say has gone up to n mu. right? And uh, if you have more than n s people in the system, then of course, it will be remain at s mu, because only um, s people can be serviced, since you have s servers. So, therefore, then the service rate will be s mu, but I uh, will try to explain. And therefore, diagrammatically, if you look at the transition diagram here, then uh, you see um, arrival rate is the same lambda, right? which is um, uh, you know. So, lambda is the arrival rate, but the service rate um, changes. So, if you have one person in the system, then it will be uh, mu, right? because the, you serviced and therefore, you get back to 0 state. Uh, if you have two people, then two are being serviced simultaneously and therefore, your the rate at which the system can transition uh, from 2 to 1 will be 2 mu. So, this uh, should be understood very well, because so what we are saying is that th that many people are being serviced and therefore, uh, the probability of transitioning that means, the rate at which the, you can transition from 2 to 1 will be 2 mu. And similarly, with 3 people the rate of transition will be 3 mu, but the arrival pattern is the same and therefore, that the arrival rate is lambda. Okay. So, this will go on up to s minus 2 and then um, uh, up to s minus 1 and when you have s people in the system, if your state is the system is occupying state s, then it will be s mu and thereafter uh, the service rate will rep, uh, remain at s mu. Right? The arrival pattern would be at the rate of lambda, but the service uh, pattern uh, service rate would uh, then remain at s mu. So, this is the idea and um, so here the service rate depends on the number of people in the system. That is, if the number of people is less than s, then it is n mu and if it is more than s, then it is s mu. Now, let us understand the assumptions, which is very important. And uh, the, uh, what we are assuming is that all operators operate at the same mean rate. So, right now, this is a simplification, because obviously, uh, it will get very complicated if I have uh, different servers with different service rates. Uh, so, uh, therefore, we are assuming that all operators uh, operate at the same mean rate mu. Therefore, I am saying that the uh, when there are n people in the system, the service rate will be n mu and when there are more than n, it will be s mu. So, this, this is possible only if I make the assumption that all operators or all service people are operating, uh, they have the same mean rate mu. right? And so, this makes it, uh, because then we do not have to keep track of which servers are busy, you know, because then we will have to accordingly keep changing the uh, service rate and that will become uh, quite uh, problematic. Uh, right? Okay. And th again, I feel that this is not uh, a very, uh, this, this can be treated as a realistic assumption, because you know, uh, a person may be a little more efficient than the, uh, the other, but the differences cannot be very, very large to really take care of them in the system, right? in the model. So, this is what one assumption. And then the second assumption, which is important, is that departures will be one at a time. That is, probability of service of two or more services being completed exactly at the same time is 0. So, this probability that means the departures, because that is the important of the uh, you know when we say that we are looking at MMS system, and um, yes, I will have occasion to uh, explain uh, you know, through the when we talk of Marco processes, we will discuss in detail. And so, anyway, and when we are talking of Poisson process, remember I had told you that uh, there is a always a small interval, uh, there is a small enough interval in which we say that the probability uh, of one arrival is probability, uh, you know, there is something like lambda delta t, right. And then for more than, um, more than one arrival, it was of the order delta t square and higher order, right. So, 
So, therefore, we were neglecting the, the so the probability was again that means, we, we assume that exactly at the same time two or more um, customers will not leave the system. So, the service will not get completed exactly at the same time for more than one people. So, therefore, there will be a, a distinct interval between two departures. Okay. So, therefore, we can uh, model this as a birth death process because our birth and death process, the assumption when we are talking of MMS. So, then uh, the basic assumption is that your uh, arrivals and uh, departures are distinct at distinct times. Uh, you cannot have more than one departure or one arrival at the same time. So, once we make that assumption and uh, of course, and the second assumption is that the uh, operators are all operating at the same efficiency. So, the mean rate is same, then we can process this system as a birth death process. right? Okay. And um, so, now one can write down the balance equations. So, this is the first one, which is easy to understand, right? because uh, you have, uh, you already have one person, then the rate at which it can depart is mu. So, mu p 1 must be lambda p naught. One person can arrive when you have 0, when you are in the 0 state. So, then this is, and this gives you this. Right? Similarly, when you um, want to write for, so two people in the system, then it will be lambda p naught, you can go to p 1, uh, sorry to 1 and from here, when you have two people, then at the rate 2 mu, you can go to again, because one departure, uh, one person gets serviced and so you again go to p 1 and here it will be lambda plus mu, right p 1. That is why the transition diagram and even when I were discussing M M 1 system, I had explained to you how you can you know uh, interpret the uh, a transition diagram. So, it will be lambda plus mu. So, it is actually not, uh, you know, there is nothing new here, except that you have to remember that. Um, so, I have not written down the remaining things, but it is understood that up to s minus 2, you will have this thing. Uh, and then after that, you will, the moment you have s people in the system, s or more, then this is the balance equation that you will get. right? Okay. So, once you have uh, written down these balance equations, um, immediately you can start solving. So, p 1 in terms of p naught will be lambda by mu p naught. And then if in the second one, if you substitute for p 1 in terms of p naught, then you get your uh, 2 mu p 2 as, uh, oh, okay. So, the expression uh, 2 mu p 2 simplifies to equal to lambda square upon mu p naught. And therefore, p 2 is equal to lambda square upon 2 mu square p naught. So, note the correction that 2 was missing. So, it should be lambda square upon 2 mu square p naught. So, all the probabilities can be computed in terms of uh, p naught. So, uh, important thing is that uh, the moment you have more than one um, server, uh, things change a little and one has to understand under what assumptions you are uh, now modeling the situation. And so, I have tried to explain to you how uh, we will, under what assumptions we will treat this as a birth death process. So, uh, the services are all at the same rate, that means all servers have the same efficiency and uh, that uh, no uh, uh, more than one departure at exactly at the same time. So, there will be distinct interval of time be, between any two departures from the system. So, under this you can easily write and then of course, the service rate changes depending on the number of servers you have. And so, under all these three assumptions, you can write these balance equations and then we will try to get the um, uh, probabilities in the gen general formula and then we will again compute uh, your uh, quantities L, L q, W, W q to get an idea about. Uh, so, therefore, your traffic intensity also uh, will change, right. You can see that because your service rate is changing and therefore, your traffic intensity will also change. So, all these uh, again open up a very interesting uh, this thing, uh, you know situation and we would like to uh, look at them.